What's up everyone? John Rettinger from Techno Buffalo here with my Apple laptop buying guide. I make these videos probably about two to three times per year as we gear up towards Apple updates. PC laptops are updated pretty regularly throughout the year. Apple, if we're lucky, we're going to see updates about two times, and I think we're heading up to one of those periods. One of the questions I get all the time is when is a good time for me to buy my MacBook, for me to buy a MacBook Pro? Well, I'm going to go ahead and answer those questions. I hope you enjoy. So I'll be doing another video going over all the desktop lines in Apple's lineup. Let's go ahead and jump right in with the laptops. Let me first say that I think we are going to have a redesign completely of the laptop models, primarily the MacBook and the MacBook Pro, uh, sometime in mid-December, early January. So if you're the kind of person that needs to have the most recent up-to-date up to design technologies, you are going to want to wait to purchase a MacBook or a MacBook Pro. If you have your eye set on a new MacBook Air, you're going to be fine. Those products were just recently updated. All right, so let's start with the top, the entry level MacBook. So in the past, we've seen Apple combine their MacBook and MacBook Pro lines and leaving only the plastic model to sort of bear the MacBook name. We used to have an all aluminum MacBook. Uh, I think that the plastic model is going to be very, very, very short for this world, unfortunately. Apple's design standards are really going towards that aluminum unibody look. We saw it with the Airs, we have it now with the MacBook Pros, and as iconic as that plastic look may have been in the past, I don't think it aligns with Apple's design in the future. So if your plastic look is something you really want, you may want to jump right in and pick one of those up. It's been about 195 days since the product was last updated, and it averages about 195 days between updates. So we're really due right now for an update. If the plastic MacBook does get a stay of execution, a logical upgrade would be in the processor standpoint to a newer, more powerful Core i3 chip. Uh, that would be sort of the logical upgrade that we'd see. There's not much left that Apple can do with the plastic design. It is sort of plastic unibody, uh, but again, doesn't follow that all aluminum look. Uh, we may see an update in RAM to perhaps from two standard to four standard, although that is unlikely. If we do see any update to the plastic line, I think it's only going to be underneath the hood and will just be in the processor. As again, I do think the plastic body is going to be short-lived. So why is that plastic body going to be short-lived? Well, let's go ahead and talk about the MacBook Pro. First, according to a Mac rumors, it's been 230 days since the last update, and it averages about 208 days in between. So we're already about 20-ish days late, uh, according to Apple's average release cycle. So I think we're going to see a complete redesign of the MacBook Pro line. I think it's going to be more in line with what we see with the current MacBook Air with the tapered design. Now that design is going to lead to a few questions. First, what's going to happen to the ports? Well, we see a 13-inch MacBook Air with just two USB ports, uh, and that's really just about it. People go to a MacBook Pro for the port options, and the big question is how Apple is going to use their MacBook Air design on the MacBook Pro and still give people that array of ports that they've been used to, whether or not it's a card reader, a brought back Firewire port, extra USB ports, uh, whatever that technology might be. So I think we're going to see a bit longer uh, design factor that'll accommodate those extra ports. I think Apple is gone with the flip down window we saw on last generation MacBook Airs. Uh, so we may see longer ports. Uh, I don't suspect you're going to see stacked USB ports, one on top of another, that does not make it conducive uh, for using multiple devices. So expect a bit longer of a design, uh, very similar with that tapering form factor uh, that we have right now. Uh, as far as hard drives go, what's Apple gonna do if they wanna make these things so thin? Well, there are smaller hard drives, 2.5 inch spinning platters as an option, but of course the market is headed towards solid state drives, and we may be at a point where solid state drives become sort of the affordable option. Uh, Apple currently on the MacBook Pro has a 512 gigabyte solid state drive as a build to order option for $1,300. Clearly no one's gonna be jumping at a $1,300 build to order option. I think that once that price gets halved or a bit more, a 512 upgrade could potentially be a possibility. I think we're gonna see entry level solid state hard drives of 128 and 256. 
uh, similar to what we have in the 13 inch MacBook Pro. And that's going to be true for the 13 and or excuse me, MacBook Airs. And that's going to be true for the 13 and 15 inch uh, MacBook Pro models, or perhaps a cheaper built to order option to that larger 512 uh, solid state drive, which hopefully will get priced in half from that current $1,300 uh, price range. And again, I expect these updates to be in the mid-December, uh, early January timeframe. So again, if you love the current design and you wanna be able to grab a good deal on what perhaps might be a generation behind technology, but still a very capable computer, uh, now would be a time to get your MacBook Pro. If you want the latest and greatest, you need to have that and you want to see what the new design is going to look like to make your decision, uh, definitely wait until after the update. Uh, if you do decide that the current hardware is what you want, you still may want to wait until that update, as oftentimes in the Apple refurbished store, uh, there will be severe discounts on the Apple a model, and Apple also generally discounts uh, pretty nicely uh, newer uh, of the outgoing model, something to uh, keep in mind. I didn't expect any updates to the MacBook Air. That was just updated uh, about two months ago. Uh, so I think that's going to sort of stay as it is. Certainly the next time that does get upgraded, I think we'll see faster processors, uh, perhaps ultra low voltage uh, core i3 models. I also think in the MacBook Pro, we're going to see updates to uh, the chipset, to the newer core series of chips. So perhaps i3, i5, and i7, uh, some low voltage variants uh, of each. Certainly they're a big power consumption and the thin package, like I suspect the new design is going to be, uh, power management is going to be a tremendous uh, factor. Uh, I think also we'll see the hard drives um, sort of splayed out almost like a stick of RAM like we've seen in the past, especially for the solid state drives, solid state drives. So the modules will be sort of separated and soldered right onto the motherboard, uh, perhaps making uh, upgrades quite difficult, uh, much more difficult than what we have right now with the spinning platters. Uh, anyway guys, want to know what you want to think? Are you excited about these potential MacBook and MacBook Pro updates? Are you going to miss the plastic design? Do you think I am way off? I really want to hear what you guys have to say. Sound off in the comments down below and look for a video going over the desktop line. So the Mac Mini, the iMac, and the Mac Pro. I'm John Rettinger from Techno Buffalo. If you want exclusive content, check me out at twitter.com slash John for Lakers. And for all your tech content, be sure to check out Techno Buffalo. Links to all that information is in the underbar. See you in the next video. Bye-bye.